Why does Warren Buffett not believe that real estate is a fantastic investment? Why do both him and Charlie Munger now say that real estate is a lousy investment? I have three videos that I want to look at and I want to make just one kind of real estate compilation video. Let's dig in. In this first one, both uh, Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger are going to explain why they don't do it in Berkshire. And they're also going to explain how it's typically priced right. So there's less of an opportunity. Let's look. We don't have any competitive advantage over experienced real estate investors in the field. And we wouldn't have if we were operating with our own money as a partnership. And if you operate as a corporation such as ours, which is taxable under Chapter C of the Internal Revenue Code, you've got a whole layer of corporate taxes between the real estate income and the use of the income by the people who own the real estate. So that was Charlie Munger explaining why Berkshire itself doesn't do it. It's mainly because there's tax advantages in real estate which make it more attractive but since you can't get those advantages in a corporation because of the double tax system it doesn't make any sense an individual would actually have better shots at taking advantage of those real estate benefits but the corporation like Berkshire wouldn't want to do that necessarily because they don't get to capture that benefit now let's look at what Warren Buffett has to say about the pricing of real estate. We, we both had a fair amount of experience in real estate and Charlie made his early money in real estate. Uh, the second point is the more important point. That real estate is not a commodity, but it, I think it tends to be more accurately priced, particularly developed real estate, more accurately priced most of the time. Now, during the RTC period, when you had huge amounts of transactions and you had a you had an owner that didn't want to be an owner in a very big way and they didn't know what the hell they owned and all of that sort of thing, I mean, you had a lot of mispricing then, and I know a few people in this room that made a lot of money off of that. Uh, but under most conditions, it's it's hard to find real estate that's really mispriced. I mean, when I look at the, when I look at the transactions that REITs engage in currently, and you get a lot of information on that sort of thing, you know, they're, they're very similar, but it's a competitive world, and, and, you know, they all know about what a Class A office building in, you know, in Chicago or wherever it may be is going to produce. So at least they have, they may all be wrong, as it turns out, because of some unusual events, but, but it's hard to argue with the current conventional wisdom most of the time in the real estate world, but occasionally there there have been some, you know, there, there there could be big opportunities in the field. But if it, if they exist, it will certainly be because there's a there probably there'll be a lot of chaos in real estate financing for one reason or another. We've done some real estate financing, and uh, uh, you have to have the money shut off to quite a degree, probably to get any big mispricing uh, across the board. Yeah, C-Corps really do, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, I mean, I know there are C-Corps around that, that, that are in real estate, but there are other structures that are more attractive. There really aren't other structures. Uh, I mean, Lloyd's is an attempt at it to some degree, but there aren't other structures that work well for big insurance companies or I mean, you can't have a Walmart very well that, that does not exist in a C Corp. So they are not subject to S Corp or partnership competition that determines the returns on capital in, 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 in the discount store field. But if you're competing with S, the equivalent of S Corps, REITs, uh, or partnerships or individuals, you're, you've just got an economic disadvantage uh, as a C Corp, which is for the, those of you who don't love reading the Internal Revenue Code, is just a standard vanilla corporation that you think of all of the Dow Jones companies, all of the S and P companies, and so on. And uh, uh, the, 
as Charlie says, it's unlikely that that the disadvantage of our structure combined with the competitive nature of people with better structures buying those kinds of assets will ever lead to anything really interesting. Although I would say that we missed the boat to some extent during the RTC days. I mean, uh, it was a sufficiently inefficient market at that time and there was a lack of financing that uh, we, we could have made a lot of money if we were, had been geared up for it at that time. We, we actually had a few transactions that were pretty interesting, but, not, but nothing that was significant in relation to our total capital. So as you can see, they don't hate real estate. Warren Buffett doesn't hate real estate. They just have to get certain amounts of reward, earnings, yields, or just they have to meet certain parameters and just real estate doesn't do it for their situation. They will dabble in the financing because they look to get like eight to 10% or whatever, a little bit more than treasuries for the risk. And if, if they don't see a way to do that, they're not that interested. So let's look at another one. Here they're gonna talk about owning real estate again. Uh, I think Warren is, is also gonna mention he invested in real estate outside of Brookshire. So it's gonna be an interesting one to share. Yeah, Charlie and I, I mean both, more Charlie than, than I, uh, we've had certain personal real estate investments over time. And, it, it, you know, it's a field that in general we understand. We don't bring that much special to the game, but we, we understand it. We've made money in it. And uh, actually, at the time that the NASDAQ about hit its high, uh, REITs were quite cheap in my view, and I, uh, with, I have a less than 1% of my net worth outside of Berkshire, but basically I had, a, I had that portion all in REITs. They were all small ones at that time, and, and, but they were selling at discounts at that time. They were selling at discounts to the values of properties, and those values of properties were much more conservatively figured than today. Today you have uh, very fancy prices on on uh, real estate, and on top of that, you have the REITs uh, often selling at a premium. Though, so I regard REITs as quite unattractive now, certainly compared to five or six years ago. Uh, but that's an as that that's a group of so securities. That's for an individual, you regard them as unattractive. Yeah, and for a corporation, that much more so. Yeah, right, right. Uh, uh, the situation changed dramatically from five or six years ago. I mean, the stock market, in many respects from the 1999-2000 period is down significantly. REITs are up significantly. REITs were very unpopular five or six years ago. Now they're popular and it's, it's, it's better to pay attention to something that is being scorned than something that's being, being championed. And, and uh, So there, Warren Buffett shares with us how he would jump into real estate and he has, not inside Berkshire, but he'll personally buy REITs, real estate investment trusts, when the price makes sense. So the price was down and uh, there was opportunity to make money when nobody wanted them or not as many wanted them. And then later there, there was a real estate bubble. So less interesting when the price is elevated and there's less of a gap to make money. And again, they reinforced the idea that owning those in a corporation doesn't make as much sense as owning them individually. Now this next one is some of the more late, the latest content about Warren Buffett and his thoughts on commercial real estate and banking. In 2023, early part, there's been some bailouts from commercial and regional banks. So let's hear what he has to say. We have had lots of investors in commercial real estate who have come in and said that this is going to be a crisis point, that the government is going to have to step in um, that something should be done because there are so many commercial real estate loans that are coming due between now and 2025 and that they won't be able to get credit from the banks in the same way to renew or to, once those maturities come due, to refinance. Well, let's say they lose $100 billion in the banking system. Most of the banks can take that loss, their share of that loss, and a few of them, because they did other things, you know, their shareholders will end up losing the money, but the depositors won't lose money. But if you lend money to somebody and uh, it comes due and they can't pay, you know, the, the old story about the banker, I never, I never made a bad loan. 
course, some of them turn bad after I made them. I mean, and that's exactly what happens in, you know, whether it's in commercial real estate. And if people, if money rates are 2% or we were lending money out of four basis points at Berkshire to the, to the federal government, uh, not much more than a year ago, a year and a half ago or something like that. And if those rates change, let the person who bet that they wouldn't change lose money. I mean, that, that, that's you know, if you make mistakes in business, there's people, plenty of people make mistakes. You pay for them. If you've got a big profitable business on top of it, you know, which a good many banks do, you take your losses and you, you keep going on. I mean, banks can take a lot of loan losses, but they can't take something that wipes out their capital and, 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 and expect the world to ignore that fact. Meaning that you don't think anything needs to be done on the commercial real estate front. Well, that... I think that the people that the people who lend too much money should take losses. And, they, and they're getting properties handled, handed back to them now. I mean, uh, you know, within the last month or six weeks. I the mean, banks are. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they got some office buildings in Los Angeles and, and uh, you know, Blackstone walked away from something. I mean... And, and if you get a non-recourse, you know, every, every, everybody goes in the real estate business is told the first rule, the second rule, the third rule is never sign your name to anything. And so you have non-recourse mortgages and they're going to walk away and the bank's going to get stuck with losses. And maybe they'll hold the property a long time and it'll come back. And they, I mean, there's all kinds of ways that if you got capital strength, you may, you may decide, well, I'll just hold it. And, and, but that money is sterile for for quite a while, and that's part of banking. I mean, you expect to lose some money in banking. It's not a sure thing on every loan, and you build that into your calculations, and then you have capital that protects your depositors from from it uh, eating into their money, and if it does eat into their money, then the FDIC, which is in effect really a mutual insurance company of a very peculiar sort, uh, essentially spreads the losses among the continuing banks by higher FDIC assessments in the future. There you go. Warren Buffett is saying, if you made risky bets, you have to accept the consequences. So those are the three, three videos I thought would be relevant to Warren Buffett and his thoughts on real estate. From what it sounds like, it doesn't work for them because they're mainly investing out of a corporation, but they would do it or enter in the financing if there was enough juice to squeeze like if there's enough discount where they can make a profit or margin of safety they would be interested they're not opposed to it but it has to meet their investment parameters it implies that for an individual investor it might be better to invest in real estate but it would also be good not to just jump in when times are good if you can wait for a discount or tight markets or a recession that's most likely what Warren Buffett is saying would be the best for individuals. Let me know if you agree with that in the comments. Cheers.